wide open throttle. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to beautiful Southern California in wine country and welcome to the 2023 Honda CRV Hybrid in Sport Touring trim. This is the top level of the car and now Honda has released the Sport and Sport Touring, both hybrid versions of the CRV. And this has really upped the game because we've already driven the EXL with the 1.5 liter turbo. And a lot of folks thought, hey, this car's missing some things. Why would I upgrade to the new one when my old CRV has rear charge ports and other small things? But the reality is we were just waiting for this car to come out because the CRV and CRV hybrid are now just CRV and the hybrid versions are just simply trim levels. So let's get to it. This one, instead of the 1.5 liter turbo, has the two liter naturally aspirated engine with a two motor hybrid system. Now in the sport version, the lower trim level of the hybrid, you can get a front wheel drive or all wheel drive version. And the most efficient version of that is going to be the sport front wheel drive with 43 miles per gallon whereas this in all-wheel drive top trim you're getting about 40. Now that's no small feat for a car this large because my little Honda Civic Si is getting about 40 miles per gallon and the EPA rates it at 37. So you're getting even more out of this CRV. It's rated at 204 horsepower, 247 pound-feet of torque and that torque is very meaningful because you're getting all that torque from zero RPM because that is facilitated by the hybrid electric system. And this all-wheel drive system is now a 50-50 torque split, so it can send 50% of that power to the rear. Now, from a styling standpoint, I really love the new CRV. I think it's very sleek, it's very mature, it's grown up, and in the top trim with these hybrid models, getting rid of the chrome, all of the little details, painting things black, it really allows this car to stand out properly. And I love the way they hit a bunch of features because actually the radar is right behind that emblem. But you're not buying a CRV because it's a track star. You're buying it because it's incredibly practical. And the first thing you notice is this giant rear door. It really seems like an extended wheelbase seven series when you look at this. When you open this door, it opens 90 degrees. So all the parents out there are gonna be very happy to put their kids in and out of this car with this kind of opening. This is insane. And then then when you get in, there is a ton of legroom back here. This is a really spacious cabin for your rear passengers. We have charge ports for all of those who are complaining about no charge ports in the EXL version of the car that we reviewed earlier on the channel. Yes, you do get charge ports. You just got to get a higher trim level car. We've also got cup holders and a nice armrest back here. It's not a floppy armrest. It does sit up above this middle seat. And up front, you'll see the new design language of Honda that we expect to see in just about every vehicle coming out. And I love it because it's just incredibly ergonomic. Some folks think it's a little simple. Some folks don't like the screen up in the middle like that, but we'll get to that in a minute. I actually really love this nine inch touchscreen, which is the larger version of that because we are in sport touring trim. One thing you'll notice, these doors close incredibly smoothly. And then around back, we have our iconic D-pillar lights for the CRV. Very nice stuff. And an incredibly quiet and smooth rear hatch. I do like that quite a bit. And in the back, exactly what you would expect from your CRV, tons of storage space. And this is where you can start to see the 60-40 split for the rear bench seats. You can actually recline them and set them as you like. So I have them in a pretty reclined, relaxed position. But when you fold these down, you'll notice that this actually lowers a little bit so this is a little bit smoother. Now it's not quite as flat as you would get in the HRV, but that's still pretty significant. That is a lot of space. You can move into your new house with your toddler and then you can move them to their college dorm room in this vehicle because it'll probably last 400,000 miles. And then we'll get our very quiet. Rear hatch closed. All right. Pretty much what we'd expect here, capless filler, good stuff. And let's take a look under the hood. 
we have hood struts that's some premium stuff here and there's our two liter four cylinder and some bright orange cords to let us know which ones go to the hybrid system pretty standard stuff for what we expect but what i love is the integration of this hybrid system with this engine i think it really comes together nicely one of my favorite design changes for this generation, the sixth generation of the CRV, is this mirror location because it actually gives nice big gap right here for both sides for the driver to be able to see a little better. And so that actually makes a big difference in your visibility. Up front, we've got these beautiful seats that are ergonomically made. Honestly, this is a very comfortable seat, a place that I would like to spend a lot of my time. We have power controls and good lumbar support. And look at that, that moves fast. That's good stuff. Up front, we have our beautiful soft leather wrapped heated steering wheel. We've got our nine inch display here. And what I like is that they've returned to a normal shift lever because as much as those push buttons are nice, this is just way more intuitive when you're going from reverse to drive in a quick situation instead of having to look for those buttons. I do like that. We've got a USB charge port and a USB-C here as well. And we're now used to our beautiful knurled switches for our HVAC system and, of course, a real volume knob. We like that as well. The Bose system in this car has been especially made for the CRV. This is a 12-speaker Bose system in the top trim. We get our hybrid display coming up here. So let's get it started. Silently. And take it for a drive. Now, the first thing you'll notice is we don't have a tachometer. We have a power meter. It's in EV mode right now. That's great. And then in reverse, we have an HD camera. It should, it could be a little better. That could be like 4K, but you know, that does the job. I can see what I need to see. Let's see how it gets off the line. And then a stop from, let's say, about 60. Pretty crummy road, balanced braking, very nice, doing its job. I feel pretty confident in this car, honestly. Pop it into sport mode. seats are really supportive. You can use that regen to help collect a little bit of energy when we lift off the throttle. Also helps us brake just a little bit. Wow, I am very impressed with the seats in this. These are really good. Beautiful day up here. Just outside of Santa Barbara. Wine country and our CRV hybrid. <laughs> this is pretty great. So the first thing I'm noticing is just how planted and together this chassis feels. I don't feel like I'm in an SUV. I don't get the sensation that I'm in a vehicle that I really need to like think hard about before I pitch it into a corner or, or, or hit the brakes or get on throttle. Um, compared to the 1.5 turbo, this definitely makes a better sound. This two liter is a little more Honda in my opinion. Um, and then there's more torque just because it's coming in at zero. That's gonna be really good for making passes. That's gonna be good for getting into traffic very quickly because that's something that I've had an issue with in the past with uh, the, the 1.5 liter turbo. It was difficult to get that thing off the line. And this one, I do feel it can get off the line quite a bit faster. Um, I'm gripping a really lovely leather wrap steering wheel, which I'm used to in my Honda Civic Si. Something that I really enjoy about this car that I haven't really enjoyed in other Hondas recently is that it feels a lot quieter. Um, I feel like the NVH in this car is definitely more refined than what I've experienced in other Hondas. This is gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. And hopefully we can get around some courteous drivers. Very nice. Thank you to this Hyundai. Wow, now that's good Canyon etiquette. We break out of the clouds into this beautiful setting. Oh, 
This is incredible. I've discovered the drive mode situation. So you have D and B, drive and, br and brake. Now, like I said, you can set up the regenerative braking in D mode just with the paddles. However, in a second, it will take that away in the drive mode. So it'll just like kill that and cancel it. That's like a temporary thing. Whereas if I put it into the B mode, it will hold that braking setting that I've selected. So that way it's always there. And I find that to be really valuable in traffic or in situations where you're just not wanting to keep hit hammering that little paddle. So this I think is Honda's way of bringing people sort of into the EV world because this is not proper one pedal driving. Uh, it's not going to bring you to a complete stop, but the regen braking is strong enough that it can be used in most calm scenarios. You know, you're not going to pull off the pedal and, and, and go through the windshield like you do in a Tesla, but it does bring the car down to speed pretty darn quickly. Now, what's really impressive about this car is that it has this intelligent navigation system now that it will actually use the electric power or regen appropriately depending on where you're going. If you're going up in the next segment of your travel or down in the next segment of your travel. So let's say that you are driving on a straight flat road and it knows that you're going to be descending pretty soon. It's going to use more electric energy to get you along that flat road because it will know that there's going to be a descent that it can recuperate energy. That's pretty great because that's going to improve your MPGs. And that's a hard thing to define in terms of what it actually means in practice because, you know, it depends on how long the descent is. It depends on how long that straightaway is. So your fuel economy will vary. Now, one thing that's really strange about this car is its transmission. There essentially isn't a transmission. It's driving the wheels. Let's get into the power flow here. It's driving the wheels with the electric motor and the engine serves basically just as a generator to feed power into that battery so that way it can do that. Now, it also can drive the wheels with a direct drive from that engine to the wheels. So there is, you know, drive conditions on the highway, I believe, there's the gear, to where it's actually the engine direct driving the wheels. We're on some smooth roads, but what I am noticing is that the suspension is really good. This is very comfortable. It's absorbing everything I need it to. It's putting those wheels back on the ground pretty efficiently. Use some of that regen to get around this corner without going full speed, which I like. I think it leans into a corner pretty nicely. We're carrying a little bit more weight than we were in the 1.5 liter turbo. However, I feel like whatever changes they've made to uh, accommodate for this little bit of extra weight really suits the car. It makes it feel more substantial in a good way. Let's take a look at the turning radius. I, I, I honestly, I'm not positive what the turning circle actually is, but it seems better than my Civic. <laughs> That's pretty legit. That'll do the job. It's not incredibly tight, but it's tight enough. And it's not something where you're like, oh man, I'm going to need to do a bunch of three point turns everywhere. I've lived that life before. This all wheel drive system is now a 50 50 split in certain situations. So previous generations were more of like, I think a 40 60 split with the, you know, 60% going to the front. Having a more balanced all-wheel drive system definitely makes the car feel a little more composed, especially on a corner exit. Fake noise being pumped into the cabin in sport mode. A little trick up Honda's sleeve. They play the same game with the Civic Si. Wide open throttle, there's 100% on the power meter. So sure, she's not exactly a straight line dragster, but this chassis gives you the confidence to chuck it in and out of corners as you please. I do wish that this as the top trim CRV got the full digital dashboard that we're getting on high trim level Civics and uh, the Civic Type R. Um, 
that would be nice, but I've got this sort of analog speedometer going on on the right side, and it would be cool to have the ability to adjust and, and scroll through even more screens, especially in a car with this kind of technology. I'm pleasantly surprised by these seats. I'm pleasantly surprised by this all-wheel drive system, which lets you get in the power kind of early. And I love that these mirrors are set back, so I have additional visibility here. The windscreen has four degrees of extra visibility compared to the previous fifth generation CRV. And it shows, I mean, this is such a great cabin as a driver because you get such a great vantage point. You can see everything going on. And that's important. I think a lot of new cars kind of miss the mark on that because they're they're aiming for safety standards, which of course is important, and this is a safe car as well, but sometimes you end up feeling a little encapsulated in the vehicle rather than having a good forward side and rear quarter visibility. This car does that really well. Now, I do wish that this had a plug-in hybrid option. I love the idea that you can plug in at home, slow charge overnight, and get your you know 30 to 50 miles of pure electric motoring, which is great because that's kind of the commute for most people. And then they don't need to use any gas, but this is kind of the predecessor to Honda's next generation of EVs. The prologue has been shown a little bit, so we know it's coming. Um, but you know, that's really my only gripe is that you don't get to plug this in. You don't get the RAV4 Prime experience with this vehicle, but otherwise as a driver, I find this to be superior to that competition. So that's the deal. I think this is a really solid package. It's a great chassis. Of course, everything could use a little more power, but with the torque that you get out of this, um, it, it does a really good job of being a good all-rounder. And it's fun to drive. It's incredibly practical. It's stylish. It's ergonomic. And it's under $40,000. So that's the first look at the all-new Honda CRV Sport Touring. No longer the, the, the Honda CRV Hybrid, although it's easier to name it that on YouTube, but really two trim levels now of the CRV are hybrids. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my time in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, guys, I found a tarantula. Look at that. That's a spider. This is crazy. Hey, tarantula. Oh, my God. Come on. That is huge. That's like the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, time to go. Never getting out of this car again.